Somebody give a shout to Jesus. You know, the most exciting thing for me is this place. I don't know if you know this about Hill City. This place was a dark and desolate place. When we came here, we didn't even know this. But this used to be the place when people were killed, their bodies would be dumped here if they were murdered. There was a lot of bloodshed. There was a lot of witchcraft. There were a lot of just all kinds of altars on this place. We uprooted those altars. We uprooted those altars. And now this is an altar of the Most High God. And every time I see the praise of God going up from this place, I say, bless the Lord that this territory has been taken. And as far as we know, in our lifetime and beyond, the name of Jesus will be praised on this land because this land belongs to God. This is family land. Father, we thank you for this land. We thank you because the light of Jesus will shine from this land. We thank you because no power of witchcraft, no enemy, nothing can reign in this place. We thank you, Lord, like in the temple in Jerusalem, whenever we pray in this place, that, Lord, you hear our prayers. We thank you because, Lord, heaven is very close to this place. There's a portal to heaven in this place. We thank you that, Lord Jesus, angels descend and ascend in this place. And we thank you because, Lord, there's something particular about geography with you. That, Lord, you appear in specific places, and this is one of those places you've chosen to appear. And so, Lord, even as we come into this place, we thank you because yokes are being broken. Chains are falling. Lord Jesus, you're healing. You're bringing blessing to your people. You're equipping your people to be shepherds. You're giving us the strength to carry on, to be strong in this time. Lord, we live in a world that is dark, is difficult, is full of all forces and powers that seek to stop our witness, to stop us from, from, from shining your light. But Lord, we thank you that even a small light is enough to dispel darkness. It doesn't matter how much darkness there is. Have you ever noticed that, God's people? It doesn't matter how much darkness there is. Even a little light will dispel the darkness. And right now, Lord, look at your people. Hear the lights. Hear your lights, Lord. And Father God, I pray that indeed the light in us will shine. It will shine and bring light to the world. And I declare right now, there are some of you who are in dark places right now. Right now, your family is that dark space. And I declare that the light of Jesus is coming into that place in Jesus' name. It's not even because of effort, not by power or by might. Not by power or by might. But I declare in your family, salvation is coming. And I declare for somebody who's been crying out to the Lord over your family for a long time, the end of this year, you will testify that your family will be completely different. It will be completely different because of the light of Jesus. And listen, here's the most exciting thing. God will use your light to bring light to your family. Amen. Father God, I thank you because some people are working in dark places. Some of these people are working in offices that are dark places, in dark industries. I speak of a grace who's, who's entering into politics, dark places. But Father God, I thank you because the darkness has never overcome the light. And it will not start today. And I declare over your people that Lord, wherever they are, whichever office you're serving in, whichever industry you're in, it doesn't matter how dark it is. Because the Lord is in you, the light will shine from you. And the Lord will use you to bring transformation and reformation in that place. And so I thank you Lord. I just sense the Lord is ministering light right now. He's speaking about light right now in our lives. He's speaking about light. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I want to pray for somebody whose eyes are not seeing well. Somebody who's struggling with darkness. They don't have focus. Their eyes don't see well. And Lord, as, as you're speaking about light right now, I just want to speak over their eyes. That Father God, you would bring healing over eyes that are not seeing. If this is you, just receive this. I just speak over your sight that the Lord is washing it and he is cleaning it and the light is coming and the healing is coming and the Lord is doing something new something that you will not have to struggle to attain because the Lord himself is doing it and so Lord I call you right now to just bring light to your people in the dark spaces of their life bring light bring light and I pray that as you do that Lord we will shine like lights in a dark world so we love you, Lord. 
we bless you lord i thank you for every shepherd in this house and all the shepherds said amen come on give glory to god god of light amen amen Woo! praise god please have your seats wow we have one more session anybody ready for god's word oh yeah oh yeah remember it's not about information it's about it's about in, there's an impartation there's an impartation and i believe by the way guys let me just say this um why i, pray, why I love praying for people who don't like being in front of people is because i was one of them and the lord gave me an impartation and i know there are people who've told me because i i i hung around bishop oscar of nairobi chapel for years just hung around and every time the man would speak i would say god that's authority like that man has such incredible authority and i remember just thinking i felt like an imposter anybody ever felt like yeah. like an imposter you're like me i don't I, like i'm asked to speak i don't have that and i felt like i was just pretending but I just began to pray and say, Lord, I want that authority. I want that authority. I want spiritual authority. And I remember people just started telling me after a while, when you speak, it sounds like Pastor Oscar speaking. Like there's just something. Whenever you speak, I just feel like the same thing that I feel when Pastor Oscar speaks. That's called impartation. That's called impartation. It's not, he's not T.D. Jakes. But let me just tell you, that man when he speaks, there's a power that God releases. There's just something. I receive it. And it's your grace. It's your grace. You have authority. You have authority. Somebody in this house, you have authority. You will speak and the nations will listen to you. They will. You will speak. The devil will not say, Paul, I know, and who are you? That's not your portion in Jesus' name. The devil will know your name. <laughs> when you pray, he will tremble. Yeah, because he trembles when I pray, by the way. He does. Because he has no authority over me. And he does. So he will do it for you. Your home will become an altar of the Most High. You will see it. By the way, me, I've seen angels ascending and descending over my house. I've never told you this, sweetie. That's why I like praying outside. Like I pray outside at 3 in the morning. I walk outside the house and I just pray. Because me, I've seen. Like my house is an altar. And I just know the enemy does not operate in that space. He doesn't. That's your portion. Hiya. You receive these things. You receive it. Amen. Amen. I want to just finish real quick, but before I do, I want you to tell your neighbor the one thing that has stood out the most for you today. Just what is that thing? There's one thing that has really stood out for you today. Remember, if you used to be shy, you're not shy anymore. So don't worry about those things you used to worry about. So just tell your neighbor, make sure you tell a neighbor, what is one thing that has really stood out for you today? Like the thing that has really grabbed your attention uh, today. It's something that you've heard the Lord say. If your neighbor is looking shy, just arrest them and tell them it's okay. One thing that really has stood out for you today. Something that you've had God say, something that has just grabbed your attention, something that's really stood out for you today. And then let your, let your neighbor also tell you something that stood out for them as well. What's like that big thing right now? At this point, it's like here's a big thing that for me has really, really grabbed my attention. The thing that has really changed me, impacted me, rocked my world. Awesome. Because I believe God is speaking. He's, he's, he's speaking. He's moving. He's doing something. He's saying something. We just need to be attentive to hear him. To hear his voice. Well, today we've spoken about building God's house. And how every one of us is a builder. He's a builder of God's house. We've talked about the job description of a shepherd job description of a shepherd and we've talked about the fact that this is our job description the lord is my shepherd it's not just a verse that tells us how beautiful god's love is for us it shows us how beautiful our love for the people that god has called us to disciple should be 
This is how we shepherd them. We've talked about our shepherd's care, the ministry of visitation. We took this care down and we just made it very practical. This is a key that is going to unlock the ministry for many of us. Many of our churches are going to grow because of this key. Many of our discipleship groups are going to grow because of this key, the key of visitation. Visitation is something any one of us can do. It's just in, I mean, it's like, it's a, it's a thing. It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not rocket science to visit someone. It's just so simple. You know, many times when we think of evangelism, we tremble because you're like, I have to tell you the right proposition, have the right answers to questions you ask. Understand. No, with visitation, you just visit and you pray. That's it. It's that simple. And God uses that powerfully to open doors for the kingdom. I want to just conclude very briefly by talking about the things that may cause you not to succeed as a shepherd. Just very briefly. Um, I think I was I'm married to a male. Uh, melancholics always think about what can go wrong. You know, like us sanguines are like, yes, let's do this shepherd thing. And Mel is like, man, here are the five things that could really go wrong with this idea. <laughs> you know? so, so she's taught me to be sensitive to the things that could go wrong. Here are the things that could go wrong. Here are the things that could cause you not to succeed as a shepherd. And I want you to pay attention to them because these are things that as you listen, even Jesus knew his success rate was 25%. He said, I mean, I saw the seed. The shepherd sows the seed. I mean, the, the sower. But he says, you know, some of it falls on hard ground. Some of it falls on places where it's eaten by birds. Some of it is choked by weeds. And he says, 25%. Some of that seed is the one that bears fruit. And so, how do you avoid being in that 75%? That hears the word and nothing comes out of it. Here's some things that might, that could do that. And let me just say, as we're talking about the shepherd and being a shepherd, some things that I think would really stand in the way for some of us. Number one, fear of rejection and failure. Fear of rejection and failure. Uh, what if people reject me? What if people don't listen to what I have to say? What if I try this and it doesn't work? What, what, what if I don't have what it takes and I try and then I find that I've failed? What if, what if... This is scary stuff. I've never done it before. But you know what 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says? It says that the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The spirit of God is not of fear. Let me tell you guys, whenever I feel fear, I know fear is a spirit. Because the Bible says the spirit of God does not give us fear. So whenever I feel fear, and it stop, especially when it stops me from doing God's work, I speak to it. I actually speak to it. And it's interesting, I don't know if you've ever tried this. This is something Kara and I just learned a long time to practice. Is we actually speak to fear. I say, I, I, I take, the Bible says, Paul says, I take captive every thought and I make it obedient to Jesus. Amen. So I actually speak to my fear and I say, fear, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus and I make you obedient to Jesus Christ. Wow. I speak to myself. And the weird thing, actually, I don't speak to myself because I'm a spirit and I'm not, a, I'm not that spirit. I speak to the spirit of fear. Every time I've done that, it's amazing. Something shifts. Something shifts. So fear is not the spirit of God. It's the spirit of the enemy. The Lord is your strength and your salvation. Psalm 21. Who shall you fear? What are they going to do to me? Even if they reject me, it's not me they have rejected. It's the Lord. And he's able to defend himself. Yeah? If people laugh at me and they think I'm really foolish, okay, it's not me they are laughing at. So the spirit of fear is not the spirit of the Lord. And so that fear of rejection and failure, uh, you need to just understand who you're serving. Who's your audience? My audience is one. I only serve one audience. And the audience is Jesus Christ. He's the one I want to please. Today in our reading, John, in our reading with my discipleship group, we're doing the book of John. One of the things that Jesus says is, the only reason I serve is to please the one who sent me. He's the only audience that I have. Jesus did not try to please people. Try to please one. When I'm pleasing the audience of one, fear goes. Because whom shall I fear? What can any, anybody do unto me? God is the one who put me here. So fear of rejection and failure, you need to write that down and say, in Jesus' name, fear is not of God. Yeah, and learn to take captive the spirit of fear. Number two, ignorance of your role as a leader. Ignorance of your role as a leader. I often hear people say, I'm more qualified Someone else should do this. Someone else who's more qualified. Somebody who can speak with authority. Somebody who sounds like Pastor Milton. 
Somebody who sounds like demons shake whenever they speak. Somebody who speaks like Pastor CJ, even has a radio voice. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Gosh. Yeah, Pastor CJ speaks, I'm like, what? Those are the real pastors, you know? Someone else needs to do this. But you know, here's the thing I've also come to understand. Psalm 29 verse 18 says, where there's no vision, people perish. And you know, people could be perishing because of me waiting for someone else to do it. It's a very crazy thing, I've realized. Without vision, people perish. Without vision, you're dooming people to mediocrity. You are. I mean, one of the things that um, my wife and I, I mean, we, 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 when, we, when we got saved, I mean, when we got married, is we determined to pray for all our siblings to serve in ministry. I mean, all our siblings were far from, many of them were far from God, uh, doing different things. But we determined that we would pray and pray and pray that they will serve in ministry because we love God and we want people to serve God and we know God wants them to serve. And I think one of the things I'm so, I'm so pleased today, my brother is around in this house. I prayed for him for many years. He loves God. He's a servant of the Most High God. God. Without that vision. Maybe because you're feeling unqualified, your siblings are going to hell slowly while you're on while you're on you're on watch. It is your duty to watch, and yet you're falling asleep on your post. Not on your watch, somebody needs to say, not on my watch. Not on my watch. When the devil wants you to understand how, like to 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 not understand how powerful you are. Bible says the, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It's powerful. But the devil wants you to feel like you, you're not qualified. You're just another person. Let the pastors pray for them. And people are dying on your watch. So, so ignorance of your role as a leader, the enemy will often use this to, not help, to help you not see how powerful you are. How your neighborhood is dying without you. Even that estate he put you in is dying. The school he's put you in, people are going to hell while you're there studying. The devil is not on holiday. He's... he's consuming people because you don't understand why he put you in that institution of higher learning. And it's important for you to understand there's a role that God put you there. When Pastor Carol and I were in, were in college, uh, God, by God's grace, uh, we started a ministry. She was actually the one who uh, conceived it. Um, and it's called SALT, Serving a Living Transformer. It's a university ministry in Nairobi University, uh, begun by Nairobi Chapel. Pastor Carol began that ministry. Uh, and we were with her as we did it. Today, there are thousands and thousands of Kenyans who have been impacted by salt. Thousands in that institution of higher learning. Uh, Pastor James was a beneficiary of salt. Like when we were starting it, we didn't know it would even produce pastors for us in the future because we weren't even pastors then. Yeah? We were in university, but we left something in that university. What, what are you leaving behind in the place you're working in? What are you leaving behind in the school you're, serving, you're, you're, you're studying in right now? Maybe God just wants you to be a catalyst in that place. And ignorance of your role as a leader is leaving people dying. So that's another thing the devil uses, the enemy uses, ignorance of your role as a leader. It could keep you from being who God wants you to be. Number three, self-preservation. Self-preservation. My goodness, this will cost me. I'm not sure I have the capacity. I'm not sure my career advancement and this will work next to each other. I'm not sure whether this will happen, will work with my current uh, space as a mom, as a dad, as, as, as a parent of young children. I'm not sure this will help me as a single mom. I'm not sure this will work for me. Self-preservation. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. He said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. It's just the uncompromising thing that Jesus says. It's not because he's cruel. It's because he knows that this is your opportunity, this part of eternity, this little sliver.
that is the reality we know the 70 years 80 years God has given you is an, a small opportunity that impacts the rest of eternity he doesn't want you to miss that he doesn't want you to waste the opportunity you have to build God's kingdom while you're here and that's why he says listen following me it's about denying yourself and doing what I put you here on earth to do and so self-preservation it's a normal thing it's a natural thing but it's a thing that we must put behind us uh, Paul says I, I die daily uh, Romans chapter 12 you know it's like I, I put myself on the altar every day a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God I surrender everything I own to him to use as he chooses to glorify himself you know one day we're going to sit in heaven and we're going to sit for a long time because eternity is a long time by definition it's not even time isn't it it's beyond time and we'll be looking back at that little sliver and just celebrating celebrating the people we brought to Jesus, the impact we had for the kingdom, the things we gave up for the sake of the gospel. Those are the things we'll be celebrating. That's all that will remain because everything else burns off. And it's all that will remain. And the Bible talks about those people who will arrive in heaven because God is a God of grace. The thief on the cross, he said, Father, uh, Jesus, uh, please include me in your kingdom. Boom! The girl was in heaven. Jesus says, tonight you'll be with me in paradise. It's a beautiful thing. But the Bible says there are people who will enter heaven smelling of smoke. Because everything that they did on earth will just be burnt away. They'll just appear with nothing. There's nothing. But Paul talks about building with costly stones and precious stones. And there are people, you know, here's a crazy thing. Because we believe in a God of grace. And a God of grace accepts me just as I am. He's a loving God. But the Bible also shows another side where it shows that there is things that happen as a result. We're not saved because of the work we do. We are saved to do work. And the works we do actually make a difference in eternity. And I suspect what happens in heaven is you show up and for, you, you're going to find that maybe when you show up, your compass, maybe you are the loud worship leader and there's somebody else who was allowed, whatever, and there's an old mama in the back who never even used to talk in church. She was not even noticed. But she's going to have streets of people waiting for her. People she witnessed to over her life. Lives she impacted. And heaven, the reception will be very different for her. And she'll have stories to tell because she lived her works will go beyond her and before her. And God is giving us an opportunity. Guys, self-preservation will keep us from what really matters for eternity. And this is why we must understand that this is a thing we put behind us. We crucify it and we live for Jesus. But self-preservation could keep many of us from living the life God created us as shepherds. Number four, not understanding the times. Not understanding the times. This is a person who says, you know what? <laughs> Maybe let me do this later. This is not a convenient season. Things are not working out for me right now. Uh, let me do things when they are settled. We talked about that in the morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Why? For in the realm of the dead, where you are going. Okay, guys. Basically, the chances of you ending up dead are 100%. It's crazy. I mean, you know, those statistics are wild. It's like none of us is going to avoid it. Like, you will die. Okay, I'm so sorry to be the bearer of bad news. It's not the kind of thing you want your pastor to tell you, but it's the truth. You will die. But here's a crazy thing. He says, in the realm of the dead where you are going, there is neither working, no planning, no knowledge, no wisdom. In other words, this is the time. You have opportunity. The story of Lazarus and the rich man uh, pertains to this. The guy dies. He's lived a life where he's lived for himself. He's built mansions and feasted. And, and he goes to, to, to this place where he realizes he's in hell. It's a horrible place. And then he looks across the chasm. And I don't know if it, that's actually something that can happen or whether Jesus was just making an illustration. But it seems that when you're in hell, you can actually see guys in heaven enjoying I'm like, okay, Jesus, I hope that was just an illustration because hell would be bad enough as it is. But here now, it's like you have a window into guys having eternal peace and rest. And he sees the, the, the beggar outside his house at the feet of Abraham, uh, at, at the bosom of Abraham. In other words, Abraham is giving him a bear hug. Like a, the Abraham. The one who is Abraham, Isaac, you know that guy? The father of, the, the guy who's God's friend. That guy who probably even in heaven, he's like, like this with God. The one who had many sons. The one who had many sons, that one. 
That's the one we're talking. Like you watch that guy, he sees Lazarus and he's just running in slow motion. It's like, wow. And you're like, dude, that guy doesn't even have money. How did he, how is he getting this? And I'm suffering. And then what does he say? He say, look, Abraham, dude, <laughs> things are bad here. Could you send that guy to go warn my brothers? So that they don't come here. They go there. And what does Abraham tell him? He says, even if somebody was to rise up from the dead, they would not listen to him. They wouldn't listen to him. In other words, the people in your family, it's not someone who will resurrect from the dead to come and tell them about Jesus. If you don't take the opportunity, it's finished. It's finished. And I, the, it's, a, it's a crazy story because as far as we know, the rich man's brothers probably joined him in hell. He missed the opportunity. He regretted the rest of his existence, the missed opportunities. He did not understand the times. He was amassing, amassing things that don't count. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know the crazy thing about money? It's a beautiful thing to help you do God's work. Mm. Somehow God has a sense of humor. Because in heaven, the streets are paved with money. It's like paving stuff. You use the cheapest stuff to walk on, wow. to make your paving. So God is like, in his sense of humor, he said... Let's just take some of these paving blocks and let them use this for money. Gold. <laughs> and now we fight for the paving stones of heaven. One day we get to heaven with all our, our, our money. Of course, you leave it behind and then you realize all that you are working for your whole life, you're working on. Or rather, guys are working on because you're not there. <laughs> or, or maybe you're the ones who arrive with nothing. You're smelling of smoke and you're working on the stuff you wasted your whole life looking for. And didn't understand. You know, this money is actually a tool for the kingdom. You did not understand the times. We miss the time. So this is one of the things that will make many shepherds not understanding the time, not understanding what they're supposed to be doing right now. Number five, laziness. Is there a nicer way to say that one? I was looking for a nice refined word, like pastoral word. Hey, sh laziness. This is entirely too much like hard work. Yeah? The Bible says, Proverbs 12, 24, diligent hands will rule. Laziness always ends in forced labor. It ends in forced labor. God rewards diligence for the kingdom. He does. Seek first the kingdom of God. There's a diligence called for. All other things follow you. He will bless your diligence. You know, If you struggle to wake up and pray at 4.30 for an hour, you're preparing for an eternity with this one. If one hour is stressing you, what are you going to do the rest of your eternity? It's like God is giving us a chance to practice. Huh? <laughs> oh, my mic has stopped working. I'm thinking the guys are not. Have I frozen? Has the screen frozen? <laughs> If you struggle so hard, so hard, your pastor is like calling you every day to wake up, wake up, pray. And it's hard. Laziness. Laziness will kill us. It will kill us. It will keep us from being everything God wants us to be. I'm too lazy to wake up and pray for my family. By the way, there's nobody in that prayer meeting who's praying for your family members. Their families have enough issues for themselves. Huh? Yeah. Families are being blessed. Yours is missing out because you can't wake up. Because you're tired. See, you have other things. You're not understanding the time. That's laziness. So, so, God, so this is one of the things that will keep, keep people from being shepherds. It's, 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 it's those habits, you know? And, you know, as a Christian, you need to actually understand that you should never let anything master you. Uh, that's one of the lessons I learned as a young Christian. I'm so happy. By the way, it made me such a careful person. My wife will tell you, I distrust anything that is addictive. I distrust it. Even tea, I distrust tea. <laughs> Anything that I feel that if I stop taking it, I'll get a headache, I stop taking it. Because, you know, these things will keep you from serving God. They'll keep you from being optimum. It's prayer time and you have a headache because you haven't had tea. <laughs> you have to go brew a cup of coffee before you can even talk to your father. That's already a hindrance to you. So I just learned, uh-uh, I don't want addictions. Addictions to TV series. Yeah? Oh, I'm so tired, I can't wake up. What were you doing last night? <laughs> You're binge watching. You know, I, I don't watch a series, my wife will tell you, unless I'm on leave. 
And the reason is because I know myself. Some of you are very disciplined. For me, I'm one of those guys, I can't handle a cliffhanger. <laughs> like, like if I'm watching and something is like, next time, I'm like, ah, just forward. What's the next one? So I'm like, I just don't start. I just don't, I know myself. I'll wait until I actually have the time to watch a whole series. Because I know it'll stop me from doing the things I need to, be, to do. I need to sleep early so I can wake up early to pray. Wow. Laziness will keep us from being good shepherds. Number six, mistrust. Mistrust. This is a big one. Right now we are doing a whole series on, a, on the spirit of offense. The spirit of offense will bring mistrust. And there's some of you who've been offended. You're offended shepherds. Some of you are offended sheep. You've been in a place where the church has offended you. Mavuno even has offended you. And let me just say, whenever you work with human beings, there's always going to be an opportunity for offense. That's one of the things we're learning, isn't it? But sometimes you can get so offended that it just keeps you from everything. Something your pastor did or you think the pastor did. Some rumor you had about something. The way you saw your pastor treat someone. And it's just like, done, I'm no longer involved. And it's like you're sabotaging your eternal destiny because of that person. Um, you've decided that that person is the reason you're not going to grow, you're not going to serve, you're not going to do the things that you're here to do for eternity. A spirit of offense will keep you from being everything God wants you to be. And this one's a big one, even for ministers. Uh, Some of the people, let me just speak, even to my pastors, a spirit of offense will keep you from being effective. It will. The devil will use it to snatch your destiny. We've talked about that. A spirit of independence. Independent spirit. Any independent spirits in the house? Don't put up your hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're too independent to do it. <laughs> you know, independent people are the ones like, why are you telling me? Who are you to tell me? You know? And this is how we are. I mean, we've talked about a spirit of independence. An independent spirit of like, I do my thing my way. And an independent spirit is a spirit of Adam and Eve. That's what caused them to lose their space in, God's gar- in the garden of Eden. Because it's like the devil tells them, why should you trust anyone to tell you anything? It's a spirit that causes you not to follow. And that will keep you from being effective because your pastor will say, this is what our discipleship groups are doing. Get your discipleship group to come for this meeting. Get them to come for the gathering. But you're like, uh, let me first hear for myself, then I decide. I mean, it's like you, you always have to do it. think for yourself. Do it for yourself. It sounds like a noble thing, but the enemy can easily use that to sabotage your leadership. Another one is the orphan spirit. We've talked about the orphan spirit as well. And the orphan spirit is that spirit that just, the, whole, the enemy just comes in and causes you to feel like you don't belong, like you don't trust, that you're not expected, you're not wanted, this is not your space. And they, it keeps you from plugging into family. So mistrust. Matthew chapter 15, verse 58, it talks about Jesus. Very powerful scripture because Jesus, the, the king of the universe, the creator of all things, in him nothing was made, there's nothing that was made without him. He walks into a place where he can do nothing. And you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about his hometown. Because it says in his hometown of Nazareth, it says, and he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. That lack of faith even limits God's ability to move in your spaces. When you have mistrust, because that's what lack of faith is, even God can't, he, he doesn't move. Not that he can't, but he's restrained himself. God is a very, he's a very interesting God because he's chosen to give us authority to call him into a space. So even when miracles happen, they happen because somebody called the miracle into being. He always uses a human agent. Read the Bible, you'll see it. He says to Moses, take the stick, hit the water. Why didn't God just say, go to the water, you'll find it already split? Because God uses human agents. When you have mistrust, then you won't be used and God won't do the miracle. And so he comes, the one who's been doing miracles all over Galilee, he comes to his hometown and he doesn't do miracles. Why? Why? Because of their lack of faith, their hearts are hardened. And many of us, we, we may miss out on miracles in our discipleship group because of our lack of faith, because of our mistrust. You'll be hearing people in their discipleship group saying, someone was healed, someone came to Christ, this group is growing, and you're wondering, why isn't mine growing? It could be something in your heart. It could be mistrust. That's something that keeps people from growing. John chapter 8, verse 35 says, a slave has no permanent place in the family. But a son belongs, somebody said, forever. Forever. A son belongs to the family forever. You have to choose sonship. It's a, it's a choice that I choose. I belong. This is my family. This is my home. I'm a son. I'm a daughter in this home. There's, there's a choice. Even Jesus, when he came, his own did not receive him. But those who received him, he gave the 
right. There was a reception first, though. He couldn't force that right. But once they received him, he gave the right. And so there's a place where mistrust of your leaders, of the church, of people can cause you to miss out and the people under you. I've got two more to go. Poor leadership. Poor leadership. I don't know how to work with people. I've never worked with people well. And I'd never ask for help. Let me just say, none of us is a natural leader. We all learn. We all learn. But the most important thing is that you're willing to get help. Because many times, the way of the kingdom is very different from the corporate world. You can find that the things that cause you to succeed in the corporate world are actually the things that cause you to fail when it comes to kingdom leadership. And you need to be willing, humble and willing to learn from others. Many times you're going to find poor leadership. Poor leadership will cause you to be impatient with people. It will cause you to be a, a, a driver of people and not a lover of people. And poor leadership skills will cause your group to, 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 not, be, uh, not, to not, not to grow. Maybe you will not be consistent as a leader. But you know the Bible is powerful because Jesus says, any one of us, all we need to do is ask. Ask. I used to ask as a young leader, God help me to grow as a leader. God give me spiritual authority. I used to feel so scared of people that I'd be like, God, just give me authority so that the people like me. <laughs> I remember all the prayers I prayed. I was so terrified. I'd stand in front, I'd, I'd, I'd hold the pulpit like this, and just to hide the fact that my knees are just knocking behind it. And I'd be gripping it so hard, it's like my knuckles would just turn white holding it. But I'd be like, God, give me authority. God, give me authority. I want to lead your people. I want to serve your people. I want to be a good shepherd. And he did it. Honestly, he did it. I don't think it was practice. I think the Lord just did it. Like, my wife can tell you, I used to, like I talk like this, I would chew my nails until they bleed. Like just how nervous. And by the way, sweetie, that wasn't a long time ago. Even in Mavuno Church, right? Yeah, I think I used to, I used to, the times I'd just be so terrified. I remember in the early days of Mavuno when we were at the club, like guys would say, what a humble pastor. Because at times I'd come and I'd just start preaching and then I'd just be overwhelmed. I, some of you have been around for a long time. I'd start crying on stage. I was a crying pastor. Remember that? Pastor Angie, which was here, I should tell you it was true. I'd be like, oh God, just help your people. And then I'd fall on my knees and I'd just start crying. And then the church would start crying and the Holy Spirit would come and do his thing. And guys would be like, how powerful. This guy just listens to the Holy Spirit. What they didn't know is I just got so overwhelmed. I looked up. Nobody was listening. I just, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but, but here's the thing guys you know let me just tell you God is able to work in any one of us if God could use me he can use you he can use you and what I began to do is just pray God show me how to do this I began to read books by leaders I began to hang out a lot like I said even Bishop Oscar really helped me a lot just hanging around watching him do it understanding I don't have what he has praying for what he has to, to become imparted on me and then one day I just realized the fear is gone. The worry has gone. I don't sweat it anymore. I actually don't. It's not, it doesn't stress me to prepare messages. It doesn't stress me to stand in front of people. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And this is, this is the leadership thing. All you have to do, Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Every one of us who knocks, it will be given to us. You just need to ask God. Matthew chapter 6, uh, James chapter 1 verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. That's the thing. I, I used to be like, God, I'm so foolish. I just need wisdom. By the way, I still pray that today. It's like, God, I, I need wisdom. And God gives it. By the way, the sweetest place to be is in a place where you know you don't know, but you know God knows. And you're flowing with him. Um, some, of my, some of my pastors have asked me, how are you able to preach like the whole day? In fact, in February, I preached for four days. How are you able to do this? It's because I'm not stressed about it anymore. Many times I'd wake up and tell God, give me the word for today. And God would do it. But you know, it's like just letting God teach me and having people who instruct me. Every one of us can grow as a leader. Don't let your poor leadership destroy your, uh, your group but learn from others who know how to do it. Ask for wisdom. Number eight and last one is destruction. Destruction, being distracted. You know, there's so much going on right now. 
this is just one other thing I'm adding. How do I manage to balance? You know, people talk about work-life balance. I don't believe in work-life balance. I don't believe in work-life balance. I know that's a shocking thing for some people to hear. I don't believe there's any such thing as work-life balance. I believe that the things that matter you focus on. And I believe what that means is that you make your life about the things that count. So my work, it's part of my ministry because the thing that counts for me is the kingdom of God. My family is part of my ministry. So I bless God. My teenagers are here. All our kids are here. The household is here. So I'm not trying to think about where do I keep my kids while I'm here because we are a family on mission. Thankfully, my wife is here as well. So it just tells you, Moray, these are aligned. Like we are, we are moving. We, we do this. Our businesses, we align them to our lives. We've always learned in life, you, there's a one thing you're called for, everything else aligns to that. Uh, and there are many opportunities we don't take because they don't align to that. And so it's understanding my calling and aligning. And what's my calling? The kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things will be added unto you. They'll be added to you. And so my prayers for myself are kingdom prayers. God, help me with this so that I can serve your kingdom. God, give me a house so I can host people. God, give me a car so I can drive people. God, give me belongings so I can bless people. You know, I'm not thinking about me here and then God's things here. It's all one and the same. God, give me a holiday so I can rest so I can bless your people. Amen. <laughs> I mean, it sounds funny, but it's true. I need a good holiday, Lord, because I'm so exhausted, and my wife is so exhausted. If we don't rest, we'll burn out, and we won't be able to minister to your people. God, give me a holiday. You know, it's an interesting thing, because it's, a, it's, it's no longer a request for me. It's a request for the kingdom. So, so when you align everything, then you stop worrying about focus and making things work. It's like my career progression is in God's hands. That's, it. That's Daniel, isn't it? Daniel did things that were career-defeating in any corporate world. He prayed five times a day facing Jerusalem. I mean, the guy would leave office and run out at the least convenient times because it was time for prayer. But you know what happened? His business advanced. I'm so sorry to say this, but Christians, we have a lot to learn from Muslims. Some of you work with Muslims, don't you? And they'll leave a meeting and say, it's prayer time. And they'll go put their mat somewhere, face Mecca, and pray. You're in the airport and all of a sudden, you just see a guy unrolling his prayer mat from his hand luggage. He goes to a little corner, even when they don't have a prayer room. And he just faces where he's supposed to face three of them. It's like they understand everything is aligned to our calling. My goodness, we can learn as Christians. We can learn as followers of Jesus. That there is no separation between me and the kingdom. Everything is kingdom. Tell your neighbor, everything is kingdom. When you begin to learn that, you stop worrying about work-life balance because you make everything about the kingdom. Lord, my wife and I need to watch a good movie because we need entertainment after such a stressful day. It's about the kingdom, guys. <laughs> I know once I watch a good movie tomorrow, I'll be on form to serve God. I mean, it's, it's serious, but even our rest is kingdom. It's not now we've done God's work, let's do our work. Are you, is somebody with me? We've been, Kara and I are praying for a house right now that's, a little, it's, that's, that's big enough to do some significant hosting because we know in the season we're going into, we're going to do a lot of significant hosting. And so we are praying that God would allow us to put up a house, but it's a kingdom move. It's completely a kingdom move. And that house is God's house. Remember, it's not my house. It's God's house. So once you begin to align, by the way, even fear goes. If someone comes and steals that car, whose car have they stolen? <laughs> it's God's car. God knows I'm, I'm, I'm an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. If, 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 if I'm an ambassador for Kenya in Japan and someone steals the official car, what happens? Who worries? Do you think the ambassador wastes time just dreaming and thinking, what do I do? The car has been stolen. That's not his job. There are other procurement guys working on his behalf to replace that car. When I understand that this is God's car, if someone steals it, I say, God, procurement. Yeah, the ministry has to continue. It can't stop because someone stole the car. Either return it or send another one. It's alignment. It's alignment. And when you begin to learn this, by the way, it will give you such freedom. You will never, ever find yourself distracted and fearing to serve God. So as a shepherd, your role is to help those people around you to accomplish the greatest task of all, which is to become shepherds themselves. 
and to make disciples of nations. That's what God wants you to do. So I want to just conclude this time before we pray. Just say what are prayers you should be praying. I want to give you some prayers to pray for your followers this year. Very simple. Uh, prayers of a shepherd. Just to pray over your people. Every one of you pray these prayers. Pray them over your family members. Pray them over your discipleship group members. Pray them over everybody you have influence over because this is your blessing this year. Four things I pray for the people around me and I pray for you guys when I pray for you. Number one, that they will grow spiritually. It's God's word for us. You, you already know what the four are. John 4. Third John 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in the truth. I love that scripture. Desire that they'll grow in their prayer life, in their quiet time, in their spiritual authority, and in their fruitfulness. Pray this for people under you. Pray it for your children. Pray it for your discipleship group. Pray it for your compass. And model it as well. Invite them to follow to enter any opportunities to grow. That's why you invite people to pray with you. I remember just, I mean, when, our, when we decided to, make, to invite our teenagers to pray with us, that was such a stretch of the imagination. Teenagers waking up at 4.30 for prayer. It's such a stretch of the imagination. I'm glad my, past, my wife had faith that she could actually ask them. Me, I was trembling. Imagine trembling to ask your kids something. I was like, they will say no for sure. They, this is going to be a fight. And you know, when they're teenagers now, you can't... It's like it's a conversation. It's not like you're just imposing. But you know what? It's such a great thing that they're doing it now. I can see spiritual growth. I can see God changing them. Sometimes you look at them and you're not sure they're awake from the corner of your eye. But you're like, they're still hearing Pastor James praying if we're in the Hill City meeting. Lord, I know it's, uh, it's being absorbed. It's entering somewhere in their spirit. Something is lodging there. Yeah. I want them to grow. I want them to love God. Let me just tell you guys, the one thing I want for my children is that they know God and that they love God. Because I've seen it in my life. Money, money is not important. I'm going to work on it. Money is a tool to help me love God. And if they can love God, everything else will work out for them. I know that. So the one thing I really, really, really pray for them is that they love God. More than anything, they'll be surrendered to Jesus. Pray this for the people in your church, in your groups. Right now, the thing we're talking about, the spirit of offense, help them to deal with that so that they can love God, anything that would hinder them from loving God. Pray that this will be their case as well. Number two, pray that they will love their church and this movement. Pray that they will love the church and the movement. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. This is what the Bible says, love one another. For, uh, John 13, verse 34 to 35, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. You love one another. By this, all men will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. Pray for your people to love each other. Pray that they will love the church of Jesus. There's too much in the world of Christians who don't love the church. Too much. Nowadays, the church has become a, a punching bag for lazy critics. Because they know all you have to say is, ah, these churches are just full of thugs. All churches are just businesses. Say it on Twitter and nobody will say anything against you. In fact, people will applaud you. So lazy people who want to get likes, that's what they say. Because they know nobody will defend. You try and say that about Islam. <laughs> You'll be burnt on Twitter. <laughs> you wouldn't even know what happened to you. It's time for God, people to love God. It's time for people to love God and to, 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 to desire the church to grow, to desire the church to be loved by people. My goodness, I love the church. I hate it when people speak against the church. Yesterday, there was a conversation in one of my alumni groups on WhatsApp, and somebody made one of those lazy comments. Oh, all Kenyans nowadays just want to start churches. It's just an easy way to make money and steal. Oh, my God, there was such a fire burning in me. <laughs> And I did something very uncharacteristic. I just wrote a whole long response to that. I said, this is, a, this is a cry of a lazy person looking for attention. I said, churches in this country, they run 70% of the educational institutions of this country. They run over 50% of the health institutions of this country. Like, how dare you say that? They run uh, economic empowerment uh, initiatives in the slums of these countries in places the government is not giving services. Churches are doing that. And I said, how dare you just take a pot shot at Jesus' church like that? I said, that's lazy.
the guy is a valuer. And I said, it's like saying all valuers are thieves. How do you feel? Yeah, I said, it's true that there are some churches that are crooks, but not all churches are crooks. Churches are doing great things for this country. I love the church. And I want you to pray for your people to love the church, to love Jesus, to love God's people, to not be individualistic Christians serving God on their own terms. Pray for your people to love the church. Pray for yourself that you will love the body of Christ. You know, if anybody ever comes to you, Yvette, and says, you know, I love you, Yvette, but I don't like your body. Like, it's over. Isn't it? It's finished. Like, you can't be my friend. You can't not like this. And then you, until you like me, it's like, this goes with me. <laughs> yeah, my body is part of me. How can you tell Jesus I love you and then I do nothing about I hate your church. It's a church I can't stand. You ever hear people just saying that on Twitter? I love, I love Jesus. It's this church I can't stand. Nonsense. Which Jesus is that you love? It's a figment of your imagination. Jesus is the church. It's his body. It's his body. It's time for us to start being proud of our church. Desiring to see the church of Jesus lifted up. Beautiful in who she is. We only talk about churches when things go wrong. But nobody ever says, my church is doing amazing things. My discipleship group, people are changing. There are amazing things going on. We sound shy about the things of God. And so people assume there's nothing going on. Pray that your people will love the church. Model it. Number three, that they will be fruitful. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We want our people to be missionaries. We want them to be fruitful. I pray this for my children. I pray this for everybody in my family. I pray this for, my, for everybody who I love, that they will be fruitful. They will be fruitful. I want them to love, to, to, to just, I want them to impact lives. I want them to multiply. I want them to bring people to Christ. So pray this for your people as a shepherd, that this will be true of them, that every one of them will impact, that their neighbors will change, that they'll come for discipleship group, they'll be saved, that they will get an excitement to seeing people come to the kingdom. Pray that they'll be missionaries. And then number four, pray that they'll grow financially. I love the fact that God is not just a God of the spiritual, He's a God of the physical as well. And 3 John chapter 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I want the people in my life group, my discipleship group rather, to prosper. I, even as their soul is prospering, I want them to prosper. I want the Lord to bless them for the sake of His kingdom. Guys, I want God to give you houses so that you can do the work of God. I want, you to be, I want the Lord to give you cars so that you can do God's work. So that you can be effective in your ministry. I want Him to give you opportunities to travel. So you can go and see the world and change people for Jesus. That's my prayer for you. Pray it for your people. Pray it in your people. That the Lord will actually help them to grow economically. Pray that the Lord will distinguish their debt. By the way, make it a prayer. Don't just pray for yourself. Pray for people in your discipleship group by name. That by the end of this year, by, by September this year, there will be no debt in that group. Make that your burden to carry for your group. Why should people be in debt and people are being blessed and God has given a word for the house? Pray that they will prosper financially as well. Those are the four things God said to us. Make them your prayer for your discipleship group. I want to speak a blessing over us right now. And I want us to conclude as we're coming to an end of our time. And the thing I want us to do right now is I'm going to invite the worship team up on stage. Um, because we want to pray. And I want to just pray over us. We're going to, go, we're going to uh, take communion. That's what we want to do. But as we have been praying about this, um, one of the words that God gave one of us is that we need to break a spirit of offense in the house. There's a reason why God gave that as the word for this season. And there's some of you right now that you've been in a place where God has revealed to you you've been offended. You've been offended by a church leader. You're a shepherd that's offended. Or you're a sheep that's offended. Somebody did something, said something that hurt you deeply. And it stunted your growth. It's caused you to not enjoy church. It's caused you to, to be a hesitant Christian. And I want to say this. Because some of you have been in Mavuno long enough. <laughs> when you've been in a family long enough. Chances are you've experienced pain because of your parents. When you're a child, your parents, the sun grows up. The sun rises and shines around them. But as you grow older, your parents 
have more opportunity to offend you. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, as, you're, as you're becoming more mature, there's opportunity for them to say something that rubs you the wrong way, to hurt you in a certain way. And I want to say this even as we pray. Guys, if I or any Mavuno pastor in this room or outside has offended you because of our attitude, because of something we said, because of something we did or did not do, please, please forgive me. Forgive us. It was never my intention. Far be it from me that the Lord will one day ask me, why did this person not grow in their faith? Because of you. And it was because of offense that I did. That is not my desire. And I know it's not the desire of any of our pastors. So I just want to stand on their behalf and say, please forgive us. Some of you, it may not even be a pastor in Mavuno, but a pastor hurt you in the church you served in. And because of that, you've always been on the back bench, even at Mavuno. Yes, you're a child of God, but you don't trust the church. But I want to say, please forgive. Please forgive. Don't let the devil rob you of the closeness you can have with Jesus as you serve him. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. And by the way, I'm serious. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know. I know because I'm, I'm, I'm old enough to know that I've offended people in Mavuno Church. Sometimes because of things I did, other times even without knowing, I offended them. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As I've spoken to some of my pastors, some of them tell me, you know, I just feel there are people in my church who are offended at me. I don't even know why. And I'm saying, forgive us. And if you need to come up to one of us and say, Pastor, it was because you said this, please do it. Don't allow offense to cut in and destroy your eternal destiny. That's not Jesus' intention. And so I just speak over somebody who's been hurt. Ah, you've been hurt by a father in the faith. And Father God, I just want to pray right now over your children. I remove that burning arrow, those arrows that were shot at that son, at that daughter, that have caused them so much pain internally, that have caused them to be callous, cold, about the things of God have held them back. And I pull out those arrows. I pull out those arrows right now in Jesus' name. I pull them out and I speak the balm of Gilead upon your children right now. I pray that Lord, you would take what the enemy meant for evil. Take what the enemy meant for evil and you would turn it for good. You would turn it for good, Lord. Father God, I pray that nobody would leave this room the same as they came in. Pastor Milton, I want to invite you to just come right now. I just would love you to just speak a blessing, even as we prepare for communion, that God would cleanse us of anything that would hinder us, anything that would entangle us, any pain or even sin, whatever it is that would entangle us and keep us from being who God wants us to be as his shepherds. Father, we thank you for this day. Actually, your promise to us is that you are doing a new thing. And Lord God, we recognize that um, there are issues, there are offenses, there are sins, there are incidents, there are deeds of God that would prevent us from walking into that space that you are taking us. Father, we recognize very clearly that you got some people from Egypt to a land of promise. But the ones who arrived there, Lord God, we know so clearly are not the ones who left. Father, be far from it for us that the ones who would enter the promise you are taking Mavuno movement into are not us. So today I just want to pray for you if you are in this place. And you just feel that you've been wounded. Wounded by a spiritual father. You've been wounded by someone in Mavuno. You've been even probably wounded by me, Milton. <laughs> um, and they're just those things that make you feel you don't trust. You are suspecting everything you are told. You are reluctant in following instruction you find yourself in a difficult space to move as quickly as you even think you would i want to pray with you as in you you've been hurt by a mavuno pastor or a spiritual leader 
I just want you to stand. Do the bold mm. thing. Just do the bold thing. It's not to shame you. Um, I know I can be offensive. So even if you are a masharika and you stand up, imagine it's fine. Mm. All that God wants to do for us is to bring healing to us. So if you are in that space, you've been wounded. You've you've thought this about Muvuno. Maybe it's how we handled a particular case. Maybe it's how we handled a particular individual. Maybe it's how we spoke to you. Just be up on your feet standing just boldly. God will want to heal you because you are the person God is calling for this journey. And I know we are many of us. We are many of us. Some of you are even staff of Muvuno Church. As in just be up on your feet standing. As in God is saying, "Hey, this is just that place where we are going to leave our past behind. We are going to leave the things that have hindered us before. I need us to stand wherever you are. I'm actually waiting for several Mavuno pastors to stand. Mm. As in, by the way, uh God is calling you wherever you are. Please just stand wherever you are. Yeah. Imagine it is fine. Do not ask yourself what will Pastor M think. Mm -hmm. Pastor M is not going to think. Pastor M is going to be joyful because the thing that God has given him in his heart, it means God is being merciful to him for it when you stand and we drop these things down. So wherever you are, just be up on your feet standing. Please, just be up on your feet standing. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you because I know we are many in this place. The picture that God gave me about this gathering and our place of repentance, um, we we are many. Just stand wherever you are. You are hurt. You are hurt. You are offended by something. A word that was said. A thingy that was said. Just be up on your feet. Stand. That probably uh, uh, something happened and and you felt pain because of it. By the way, I'm asking you to stand with such freedom because even my wife is up on her feet standing. And maybe the offender, I don't know. So wherever you are, just be up on your feet standing. Just be up on your feet standing. The Lord is waiting. The Lord is waiting. The Lord is waiting. Just be up on your feet. Thank you, Lord. We are waiting. The Lord is waiting. Lord God, in as much as we fall short of your glory as leaders, you, Lord. there are places that, Lord God, we cause offense in the hearts of people. And in many a times, Lord God, we end up making them mistrust, suspicious. We make them, Lord God, not be a hundred percent loyal to our cause. We make them, Lord God, get into a place of self-doubt. Mm. Sometimes we even eat upon esteem, Lord God. Mm. Sometimes people are misaligned from the vision and the mission that you have for them, for your purposes over their lives. Mm. Father, some have backslidden. Some have even stopped coming to any church. Mm. Some, Lord God, have become those who deride your word. Some, Lord God, we see them on Twitter. We see them on WhatsApp groups. We see them, Lord God, comment negatively about the faith simply because, Father, we hurt them. Father, when as Pastor Moredi has prayed a prayer of repentance of Mavuno Church, Father, we ask that you forgive us as a leadership. That you forgive us as a leadership. That Lord God, where you would have taken us to put a millstone over our necks and throw ourselves into the waters because of leading someone away from you. Father, we are asking for mercy. Father, we are Lord God because of contractual issues, because Lord God of probably some evaluations that were done. Father of God, probably because of the times that we fell into and someone probably was relieved of their duties and Lord God, offense was planted in their hearts. Father, we ask for mercy. mercy Father, we are probably we rebuked someone, we corrected someone, we reproached someone, we called out sin and Lord God, some people fell off because of that, oh God. Father, we ask for mercy. And Lord God, we pray that in the space you are taking us into, Father, would you wash us? Would you sanctify us? Would you cleanse us with the blood of Jesus? Would you make us vessels, Lord God, holy and blameless in you, O God? 
that you may use us for your glory. Thank you, Lord. And for those who are standing up because they've been wounded by Mavuno Church, the leadership, probably a ministry leader, a pastor, uh, 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 someone who Lord God was leading them into something. Father, by faith, I pluck out their arrows, the arrows in their hearts, the arrows in their spirit, the arrows, Lord God, in their mind, the arrows, Lord God, in their body, the arrows, Lord God, in their strength that has affected how they apply themselves. Father, by faith, I, yes. I pluck them out right yes. now in the name Thank of you. Jesus. Lord God, I ask for the angels that have been assigned to each and every one of them, oh God, yes. to pluck out those arrows, to pluck out those knives that were but stabbed upon them through gossip, Lord God, and rumor clinics, oh God. Words that got to them and they got hurt. Father God, we pluck them out right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray right now that you pour your balm, you pour your balm, oh God, over them right now, over those wounds right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, for those ones that the wounds have been long lasting and they've been septic because they've been carried over a long time. Father, may the angels assigned to them, oh God, just push, Lord God, and squeeze out every pass, every septic thing, Lord God, from them right now. That, Lord God, nothing would remain in their hearts and that you would pour balm upon them, oh God. Yes. Yes. That you would bring healing that you would bring healing and that these ones would realign themselves, Lord God, to your calling over their lives. They would realign themselves to the mission of God over their lives. They would realign themselves with joy, oh God. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, would you pour your new wine in their hearts to restore joy to restore warmth, to restore a sense of belonging, to restore, Lord God, their, their, their zeal to do the work of God. And Lord God, how much I pray for any one of them who's gotten into a place of illness, into a place, Lord God, of disease, into a place, Lord God, of anxiety, into a place of worry, into a place of fear, into a place, Lord God, of mistrust and suspicion. Father, we pluck out those spirits and cast them away from them yes. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, every familiar spirit, we cast them from them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we declare that the freedom for which you set them free will be the thing that they enjoy. Yeah. Will be the thing that they enjoy. So Father God, would you restore them into your purposes over their lives? Would you restore their feet into the way that you say that even when a fool finds it, they will never get lost? Father, would you restore the zeal of God that even as we yes. wrote God read today, the zeal that was on Zerubbabel, oh God, Father, would you put that zeal over this one, so oh God, and may they be shining lights in your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. So we thank you and we bless you, Lord, because we know this is done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray for some people here as we've been doing the series of offense. You know, it's, it's a limitation in many ways. You could have been offended by your father and you've carried all through your life. The challenge with offense is that it will affect you at home. It will affect you at work. It will affect you as a minister. It will affect you in every area. And I want us to walk out of here today with no offense. Yeah. You know, we probably do not have any other opportunity to meet like this in this season that God has given us as a ministry this word of no offense. It's supposed to be a liberating space. And liberty is coming to people today. Amen. And I want us to pray for that liberty. If you hear screams coming from people, it's okay. Do not be afraid. If you hear demonic activity being released from this place, do not be afraid. If you hear shouts and shrieks from people, um, let me just warn us in advance. Do not be afraid. It's freedom coming to your brothers and sisters. And that's what we want to pray for today. Yeah. And I trust God that the deliverance that will come into our spaces today, if you are open to it, is going to free you and put you in your purposes in a big way. So allow me to just pray for us.
if you're here and you sense in any way you carry offense, either it's from a father, either it's from how someone treated you at your workplace, either it's from a spouse, either it's offense from a sibling, a, a family issue, an uncle, a brother, a sister, whatever it is, I want you to just stand up. Not to shame you. As long as there have been offense in your heart, as long as there have been offense in your spirit, as long as there are some people who make you uncomfortable when you see them, as long as there are some people whom even when you see it, your heart skips a bit, as long as there is a space where when, when you walk into something, uh, you just feel you cannot give your best in that space, as long as there is something in your heart that you just feel, oh God, I need to be set free. Maybe there is bitterness that has come in. Maybe there is resentment that has come in. Maybe you even feel anger towards someone. Maybe you are in that place where you just feel where when you see someone they make you literally sick. I want you to stand up for the deliverance of God is in this house today. In the name of Jesus. There is deliverance good people. Do not sit down if there is any art of offense in your heart because you are going to walk out of this dome with healing from the Lord God himself for he is here so there is power in the blood of Jesus there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb there is power power Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Sin, there is power. behold your children whom you love so much. Father you gave us a word that today you are going to bring freedom to your children. You gave us a promise that today you are going to deliver your children from yokes from chains from burdens from baggages, from toxicity that has been in their lives and that Lord God they are going to throw down today the weight that has been hanging over them so that they'll run the race that you are calling them into ahead of them with ease, O oh God. And Lord God, we've invited them to stand up as a show of faith, O oh God, that Lord, they need your help. And that to your throne of mercy, Lord God, this evening, we invite you to do business with your people. Holy Spirit, you who breaks yokes, you are welcome in this place right now. May the wind of your spirit start blowing upon your children right now. May the wind of the Holy Spirit start blowing right now across this sanctuary. And may he begin sweeping away every spirit, every spirit, every force, every weight, every darkness, that is upon your children today. So Father God, right now we come against every spirit of rejection. Every spirit of rejection that has come upon your children because of offense that has been carried. Spirit of rejection, I command you right now, you are cast out of God's people in the name of Jesus. 
you spirit of rejection come out right now just come out come out from god's children come out right now from god's children you spirit of rejection just go to jesus where jesus will deal with you as he pleases so you spirit of rejection you spirit of rejection that just makes god's children be rejected by things by money by people by bosses just come out come out of your people right now just come out go to jesus as in live you are living right now leave god's people alone you are cast off from god's people right now you spirit of rejection just come out just come out go to jesus go to jesus yes go to jesus go to jesus you spirit of rejection you are no longer having any bind over god's people you are no longer having any bind from god's people just come out right now come out in the name of jesus come out right now in the name of jesus come out come out with all the pain come out with all the pain come out with all the pain come out with all the bitterness come out with all the bitterness come out with every resentment every baggage of resentment go to jesus leave right now leave you have no rightful place in this place just leave jesus we thank you for the work that you're doing amongst your people release your people and wherever you are just breathe in and out wherever you are just breathe in and out a little heavily more than usual right now in the name of Jesus father we cast off every spirit of fear from your people oh god that has come out of offense oh god every spirit of fear that comes with mistrust that comes with disloyalty oh god that comes with people being involved lord god with very weak wills oh god that make people not make good decisions oh god because of being driven by fear come out right now you are cast off. You are cast off God's people. You fear, just leave. Yes, fear, I command you right now. In the name of Jesus, leave God's people right now. Just breathe in and out wherever you are, a little heavier than normal. Just leave right now. Leave as God's people breathe in and out. Leave their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Leave right now in the name of Jesus. Just leave just leave we command you to leave you go to Jesus just go to Jesus right now 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 there is a fresh wind blowing right now I hope you can feel it there's a fresh wind blowing your way right now just breathe in and out and allow the Holy Spirit to work in you there's a fresh wind right now. There's a fresh wind right now coming your way. Just breathe in and out and receive the new thing that God is doing in your life. Just breathe in and out right now. I hope you can feel the fresh wind blowing your way. Just breathe in and out. Father, we call upon the fire of the Holy Spirit. Upon every spirit that has come upon your people because of manipulation because of witchcraft because of lord god people seeking to take advantage of your people you spirit of manipulation and witchcraft you spirit of jezebel we command you right now to come out of god's people right now we cast you out in the name of jesus we cast you out in the name of jesus we cast you out in the name of jesus we cast you out right now in the name of jesus leave in the name of jesus go to jesus go to jesus go to jesus go to jesus right now in the name of jesus leave leave yes leave right now leave right now leave right now <coughs> leave leave yes leave we declare your children free we declare your children free freed in the name of jesus freed in the name of jesus freed in the name of jesus yes leave yes leave yes leave leave right now in the name of jesus leave in the name of jesus yes leave leave right now 
we command you to go. Yes, go. Yes, go. Yes, go. Yes, go. Live right now. Live. Live God's people right now. In the name of Jesus. There are some people here because of offense and rejection, a spirit of immorality came upon you when you sought acceptance through using your body as a place to just respond for acceptance. Father God, every spirit of sexual immorality that came upon your people, we command it right now. In the name of Jesus, leave God's people. God's people's bodies were meant to be pure. They were meant to be holy. They are meant to be perfect. They are meant to be vessels for the use of God. You spirit of sexual immorality, you dirty spirit, you who seek to bind your people in sexual immorality, in addictions even, in addictions even, come out of your people right now. Go to Jesus right now. Go to Jesus right now. Go to Jesus right now. You evil spirit, you dirty spirit, you smelly spirit, I command you right now in the authority given to me as a son of God. Go! Go! Leave God's people. Leave God's people right now. Leave God's people right now. Leave and go. Leave. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them in the name of Jesus. Lose them. Lose them. And to pray against a spirit of limitation that you can only go so far. That you can only go so far. That people in your family can only go so far. That people in your family can only be educated thus far. That people in your family can only earn this far. That people in your family can only do so much. Father God, the Holy Spirit of promise breaks yokes and limitations. Right now, every spirit of limitation out. Every spirit of limitation go out right now. Every spirit of limitation go out right now. Every chain be broken right now. Every chain be broken right now. In the name of Jesus, be broken right now. Be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Out limitation. Out limitation. We are talking about a limitless people. A limitless people. A limitless people. Come out. Come out limitation. Come out you chains. Be broken today. You weights and burdens. Be broken today. In the name of Jesus. 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 Be broken right now. In the name of Jesus. You know when we. When we empty. When we empty our temple, the body of the of God, we need to fill you up with the Holy Spirit of promise. So would you, all of you, just stand up wherever you are. I would want to pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit of promise unto you. An infilling of God. An infilling of God. That is the X factor for you. That is the X factor for you. Let's just sing. The fire, fire. Fire fall on me. Join the oh, worship fire, team in this. Fire, Make this your oh, prayer. Fire, fire, Make this your prayer, Mabuno. Make this like your prayer. The day of Pentecost. Fire fall. Oh, Make this like your prayer, Mabuno. Like the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Father, today we join together in unity and in one accord. And with open arms and open hearts, oh God, 
We invite your Holy Spirit of promise. Enter your people right now. Enter your people right now. Enter your people right now. Enter your people right now, Holy Spirit. Enter your people right now. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. Move through your people right now. Move through your people right now. Our God's people breathe in and out a little heavily, a little more intensely, a little more intentionally. May you breathe the Holy Spirit of promise into your lungs. Breathe him into your lungs. Some of you will feel a fire in your heart. Some of you will begin talking in tongues. Some of you will begin to prophesy. Some of you will feel a newness of God coming upon you. Receive him today. Receive him today. Just breathe in and out, Mavuno. Just breathe in and out, Mavuno. For those who are watching us online, you are included on this call. Breathe in and out wherever you are. The Holy Spirit is there with you. Receive him right now. Receive him right now. Receive him right now. Receive him, right now. Receive him wherever you are. Receive. Receive him now. Receive him now. Wherever you are, receive him. Tell him I receive you, Holy Spirit. Save you, Holy Spirit. So come and bow down. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Sweet Receive him, Abuno. Your awesome Do not be left out. Presence. Do not be left out. of your Holy Spirit upon Pastor Godwin today in the name of Jesus. That Lord God, you fill him with your Holy Spirit with fire. 
with the zeal of God in a fresh and new way with wisdom beyond his years with understanding Lord God Father God with power to lay hands on people and that they would be healed made whole that the blind would see that Lord God the dumb would speak that Lord God the deaf would hear that Lord God those who are ill Lord God would be made whole Father we release Lord God a special anointing upon him in the name of Jesus and Lord God we declare upon him oh God that goodness mercy will follow him favor with men and with yourself oh God will follow them oh God and that you will show yourself strong on their behalf and on behalf of their ministry to the honor and glory of your name in Jesus name Lord God we've imparted this and we pray amen 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 I'd like to pray for where's part Where's Patrick? Patrick, come with your wife, Belinda. Father and our God, we release a special anointing to this couple today. That Lord God, a global ministry is being birthed between these two, O oh God. And Lord God, we release open doors. We release, Lord God, favor. We release, Lord God, resources. We release, O oh God, everything good that they need for this ministry. Father God, today we commission them, Lord God, that these ones will actually walk beyond their years and application. That, Lord God, you are releasing a fresh anointing upon Pastor Patrick, Lord God, and Belinda in the name of Jesus. And that, Lord God, you are going to allow them to speak to thousands, to millions, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That, Lord God, you are going to herald upon them a platform that they've never even dreamt of or imagined. So, Lord God, we release upon you, Lord God, into your hands these ones for a special blessing that, Lord God, you'll pave their way. You will bring divine connections around them. You'll give them, Lord God, acceleration that, Lord God, even the movement of Mavuno Church will be so expanded and exploded because of the work of the ministry of these two and that as you anoint them today, oh God, you become the wind under their sails and that you'll take them, Lord God, to people whom they did not know, that, Lord God, they will instruct a people they did not know, oh God, and that favor will overtake them in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you for these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And to pray for some people here. <clears throat> we are going to be planting churches through missional communities from our DGs going upwards. You felt the same way. And I want to call anyone who feels, by the way, a leader campus of Mavuno Church in the name of our Lord. Come here. Just come here. Just come here. By the way, I want to confirm that word because God just now gave me the same word and said, pray because many of these shepherds, you know, maybe they thought of churches as strange things, as things for professional pastors. But many of you, God is going to use your profession. God is going to use your business to plant churches. And as you're coming up, let me tell you about a young, a, a, not, not a young man. He's not a young man, but he's a young man. His name is Mcharo. Is Mcharo here? He's not here. So Mcharo is uh, one of the guys I've discipled. He comes to this church, and I remember the Lord spoke to him. He's a he's a real estate developer, and he runs a company called Savo, Savo, T S A V O, and they build big apartment complexes all over. And the Lord spoke to him, and the word the Lord had for him is, "Why would you build your house and my house is in ruins?" And the Lord convicted him so strongly that he, right now, he goes to Mavuno Kiambu. 
he actually they were struggling with a venue. He told them, come, he has a rooftop in one of his apartment complexes. And they, he told them, you can have this space for free. And right now, Mavuno Kiambu is meeting on the rooftop of his building. But that's not just it. Because then he told me, Pastor M, every building we build from now on, we're going to put a space for Mavuno Church to meet in. He has lent his boat to Jesus. He said, Jesus, use me. I may not have been trained as a pastor, I'm an architect and a contractor, but Lord, the church of Jesus will advance through me. And right now I'm speaking because some of you, your minds are so limited. When you hear planting a church, you're thinking becoming Pastor Milton. And you're not understanding, God has given you a boat. And that boat needs to become a kingdom boat. Jesus said of the man with a donkey, and he said, go and tell him the master requires of that donkey. I gave you that donkey, I require of it. And right now God is saying to somebody in this house, I require that talent. I require that career. I require that, that place you have that you thought is yours. It is mine, that house. That house, maybe the church you will plant is just your neighbors will come to your house. Please and that will come. be the church in your house, that meets in your house. But you're saying, I will do it because what is mine is God's. I feel like God is calling me to plant an expression of his church, Mavuno Church in my house. Come up, come up, come up, come up because I know there are many, many of you who are in this place. Please do come. Receive the anointing when it is still here. <laughs> While it is still day. While it is still day. Come and receive your anointing. Come and receive your enabling. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. Just come. Just come. Come, by the way. Just come. Surround this altar. Pastor Muredi will pray for you this prayer. Just come. Just come. Just come. Keep coming. Keep coming. If you are still arriving, just come this way. If you are still arriving, please come. Please come. Mutahi, it's okay. Come, come, come. It's okay. Please come. Woo -hoo. Come on, let's appreciate. Please come. Let's just clap for everybody up here. Praise the Lord. Just come. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking. Please just come. Please come. Please come. Bless the Lord. Just come. Come wherever you are. Please Bless come. The Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Please come. Thank you, Jesus. I hear a name Wilson, and probably you are still remaining behind there. I hear a name Wilson. Please, just come. God is calling you. You know he's spoken to you. Yeah. Just come. Just come. Wherever you are, just come. And Pastor Muredi will pray for you. Akwapi. Kuja Wilson. Bless the Lord. Just receive God's blessing. Father, thank you because it is so you. <laughs> I'm so amazed you gave Pastor Milton that word so exactly in the words you gave it to me just now. That Lord, you want your people to build the house of God. You want them to go up and to bring down and to build. And Father God, look at these builders. Look at them. Some of them are so young. Some of them are just beginning their careers. Some of them are moms and have so many other responsibilities. Some of them are, are, are they, they have young children. But they're saying, Lord, here is my boat. I want you to use it. Here is my life. I want you to use it. Here is my career. I want you to use it. Here is my business. I want you to use it. I thank you for every one of these. And indeed, Lord, it is a new season. It is a new season. This is a revival you've been talking about, Lord. When your people begin to take on the work of the ministry, when they begin to understand that they are shepherds, that it is their role to extend your kingdom, Lord, I thank you because it is you who is at work. And right now, Holy Spirit, we thank you because you're here. And it is you who is at work who has called these ones. And so right now, Lord, we want to speak your impartation upon them in Jesus' name. I declare over them, Lord, that no weapon that is fashioned against them will prosper. I declare that, Lord, this thing you've put in their heart, you will not let it go until it comes to fruition. I speak over them, divine helpers, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would bring them vision bearers who will stand alongside them and help them bear the vision they have. I declare over them kingdom resources. I speak that, Lord, you would multiply what is in their hands so it will be enough for the kingdom. And, Lord, I pray even now, not in the future, even now you'd begin to show them how they can begin to build God's house. 
For some of them, they're going to start using their homes and just inviting people into that space. Some of them are going to have a viewing center where they invite people and they watch the Mavuno service every Sunday. People who would never come to church. Some of them, Lord, you're going to send them through their jobs and their businesses to other places where they can extend your kingdom. But Lord, I pray for them that Lord, first of all, as they're reaching your sheep, I just speak over their families right now. I speak over you that your brothers and sisters will not miss the way of salvation. Because of your desire to serve the Lord, your entire family will come to Jesus because of you. I speak over you that the Lord will give you an instructed tongue. That it's not theological education that will, will matter for you. The Holy Spirit will be upon you. And I speak over you that people will see you and they will know you've been with Jesus. Some of you are just in school. And I speak over you right now in that early age, you will start to represent God. And God will cause you to impact many lives when you're still young. And so right now we just call God's power upon your people. Lord, just speak impartation right now. Impartation right now. Impartation right now. I speak that Lord, the spirit that is upon this house would fall upon these ones. I pray over them a double portion of the anointing that is upon my life in Jesus name. I speak over them the double, a double portion of any spirit that is in Mavuno right now in Jesus name. It is theirs. It is theirs. I speak over you boldness. There will be such a radical boldness in you that people will just be amazed like they were amazed at the early apostles. I speak over you love for God's people. Are compelled by the love of Christ, you will love God's people. God will give you such a heart for loving God's people and people will be drawn to you because of your love. I speak over you that any group you lead will multiply. Fruitfulness is your portion right now in Jesus' name. The work of your hand is blessed. The, the work of your hand is blessed in Jesus' name. Your children are blessed in Jesus' name. Your family is blessed in Jesus' name. Hey, right now we just call the oil of the Holy Spirit upon you right now. Father God, anoint. 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 Father God, fall down right now. Refreshing. The wind of refreshing of your spirit is here. Just fall down right now. Lord, reveal. Even now, begin to give visions. Right now, begin to show pictures to your people. Right now, begin to reveal yourself right now, Lord. Even as they are waiting expectantly. Begin to confirm right now the thing you've put in their heart. I speak over couples here that there will be such a unity, a oneness of purpose. Lord Jesus, draw them closer together than ever before. Let this calling be a family calling for them. Father, I pray for those who are single in this place, who are right here. And I'm praying for them divine matches. Hey, if you're single right now, just receive this. The Lord is giving you a divine match. May the Father bring the right helper to you to help you do His work. I declare that over you right now. Your, you will have children and your children will be not just the spiritual children. You will have biological children. And these children will prosper and serve God. I bless you, Lord. I speak over you that the poor will be blessed because of you. I speak over you that those who are differently able, the disabled will be blessed because of you. I speak over you that this nation will rejoice because of you. I speak over you that, that you will sense that the word of the Lord to you today is, You are my son whom I love in whom I'm well pleased. You're my daughter, whom I love, in whom I'm well pleased. And so, Father God, we just release this blessing now. We release this blessing now. And Father, I'm praying by the next gathering, some of these churches will have started. There will be testimony already of churches that have begun among your people. I speak over them right now, divine ideas. Even start to show them how it's going to happen. Small things that look like small things that will explode because the Lord is in them. I speak over you God's favor and God's speed. Bless you, Lord. Okay. Just a quick, just as I as we as I conclude this prayer. By the way, if you've made this decision, I want you to do one thing for me. Text your campus pastor and let them know. Just let them know because you need someone to pray for you. You need someone to lift your hands up. When you make a decision like this, you need you need firepower. You need someone behind you, supporting you. So text your campus pastor, say, I'm one of those. I'm one of those. Put me in that list. And, and campus pastors, start a WhatsApp group with these guys. These are, your, these are your forces. These are the special forces God is going to use to bring about a deliverance through your church. And so, Father, we just release your spirit now. 
I bless you, Lord. I just thank you for testimonies. I thank you for testimonies. I thank you because right now I'm in advance receiving everything you're doing through these ones. I thank you because of the acts of the apostles that are continuing through these ones, Lord. I thank you that, Lord, stories will be written because of them. I thank you that the nations will rejoice because of them. Lord, I thank you because the anointing you've given us is an international anointing. Nations will come to you. Nations will come to you. Come on, receive this right now. The Lord will give you nations. The little thing you're starting will become a mighty thing. A mighty thing. The smallest of you will put a thousand to flight. This is your in Christ Jesus. And so Father God, we just release this anointing right now. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and God's people say. Oh, come on, somebody give glory to God. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. One last prayer. I almost said two. <laughs> you guys can take a seat. Uh, I, I would like to pray. You are probably here, and as you listen to Pastor Moravi, um, there were some words that were coming to you that God has set you apart to be a kingdom builder. Yeah. Resource wise, this could be financially, this could be giving up, uh, buying land where churches would be made. Uh, probably God has given you glimpses of what that vision looks mm. like. As in, you know, God has set you apart. That your job is not your job. Yeah. But God has spoken to you that that thing that he gave you is actually for you to use it for the kingdom. Yeah. I'd like us to pray with you, if that is you. And I'll invite you to quickly run to the front. Uh, because time is not on our side and I need to pray for healing uh, for, for, for a few people. So if you know that God has called you to be a financial kingdom builder. On. One who will give Bless land. You, one who will do Bless territory. You, one who will Bless give you, money. Thank one you. who will give resource to the kingdom. I want you to come to receive your blessing, receive your anointing, Thank receive you, your enablement. You, and as wow. God prospers wow. you, as God prospers you, the kingdom will be far much better. You know, one of the things that I feel bad about uh, uh, Christians, and like our Muslim brothers, is these guys, when a mosque needs to be built, they don't fundraise. No. Someone just gives land, another one, our family decides we will build that thing up. You know what, good people? When God blesses us, then there should be no Mabati churches. Okay. <laughs> I'm not speaking badly about Mabati churches. I'm saying they exist because kingdom builders are not resourcing the kingdom. Yeah. Are we together? So, I want to invite us for a blessing. Are you guys coming here or you are taking a slow walk to somewhere else? <laughs> They're coming here. You are coming here. Yes. So, please, come, come, come. Wow. I know it is written full slash in. You guys are behind there are not fools, so you're coming slowly. So make sure you just reach here. <laughs> even, even the snail reached the ark. So come, come. Amen. Come. Even the snail reached the ark. You know one thing I love, Pastor Milton? Is yeah. I'm seeing so many people who are in both groups. I'm planting a church. I'm a kingdom financial. <laughs> I'm in both groups myself. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Praise God. Amen. Okay. So what we'll do, I'll invite Pastor M to pray oh, and yeah. I'll run down. <laughs> I love this. Pastor Carol, come and stand with me. This one, this one, we need double portion. Hey guys, let me just tell you one thing. Uh, Pastor Carol and I decided a long time ago, we, were, we are going to finance this church. We're going to be kingdom financiers. And by God's grace, we've been able to do it. I mean, it's been amazing. When I look at the money that has passed through our hands to Mavuno Church, it's astounding. Like, it's, it's so crazy, I'd be embarrassed to tell you. Like, it's money I'd even wonder where it came from. Uh, God has allowed us to be kingdom financiers, and I'm excited about it. But there is nothing that gives me greater joy than to see where our resources have gone. When I see children being, uh, being brought up in the way of the Lord because of money we gave, I give glory to God. Hey guys, there's an anointing that God will give you. You will not even understand the resources that will pass through your hands. You won't understand it. You will overflow. In fact, the word God gives is, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. 
you'll abound in every good work. So just receive God's blessing. Pastor Kara, if you just speak a blessing. Amen. And the blessing that God has is an amazing one because it's actually of healing and deliverance. Oh, wow. And, um, and what God says is that um, when we understand that he owns and that we manage, yeah. then there are certain things that don't come into our lives. Number one, there's no stress. Yeah. There's no anxiety. Yeah. It, and yeah. it, with that, there are, there are no lifestyle diseases yeah. of blood pressure, yeah. of diabetes, because those ones come when we do not understand, when we carry the weight ourselves yeah. and feel that it all depends on us. Yeah. It doesn't. We simply obey. He owns and we manage. Amen. Jehovah God, we are thankful. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come before you and to say we are coming as kingdom financiers. We've come to understand that the reason for the blessings that you have given us are to expand the kingdom. Yes. And I want to pray for every one of us who is here. Yeah. Just saying that with this understanding, understanding this truth, understanding this truth. And I want you here, if you even have doubt, if you feel that it all depends on you, that is a deceiving spirit. Yes. And we bind that spirit from our presence and cast it away to the pit of hell where it belongs. The truth of the matter is that God is the one who gives us. Yeah. He's the one who rewards. God rewards hard work. It doesn't belong. It doesn't depend on us. Yeah. What we've been called to do is to be faithful, to work hard, and God rewards us. Yeah. And so, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. And I want to pray for anybody here who might have the lifestyle diseases of diabetes or high blood pressure and yeah. any other of those ones that are caused by worry or even anxiety or even fear. Yeah. We command this to go in the mighty oh, name right of Jesus, Jesus because name. from today, yes. from this moment, yes. we choose to live out the truth yeah. that you own and we manage. Yes. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so I just call upon you now, kingdom resource. Amen. I speak blessing over the work of your hands. Your bonds will be full. The Lord will give you his resource, and it is his resource to do his work. The Lord will test you. He will. He will bring you resource and test you, and you will be found faithful. You will be kingdom financiers. Lord, I speak the anointing that you've given Caro and I. I speak it over your people right now. I just release it right now in Jesus' name. I pray that, Father God, every one of them will experience wealth beyond what they imagine, not for their sake, but for the sake of the kingdom. And Lord, like Caro has said, none of these guys is going to be a rich fool. None of these are going to walk around as if it depends on them. If you say give it up, they will give it up immediately because it was never about them anyway. And so, Lord, I just pray right now, break it. Any, any debt in Jesus' name, it is broken right now in Jesus' name. Some of you need miracles to get out of debt. I declare that miracle is yours in Jesus' name. By September this year, it is finished in Jesus' name. And I declare not only is it finished, but the Lord will begin to give you reserves. You're, not, you're no longer going to live on the edge. You're going to live in the place of plenty. And you'll have plenty so you can be a blessing. I speak over you that the poor will be blessed. The poor will be blessed. You're about to enter a season. Undachi and Yvette, I just want to speak over you, pastors. You're about to enter a season of prosperity. I know that you've been faithful to God and you've been through some tough times financially. But I declare to you that those times are over. They're over. Yeah. The Lord will do some things miraculously in this season that no eye has seen, no ear has heard and you will give testimony of it to God. And the Lord will set you up high. As you bless others, you will become, you will serve God out of a place of plenty. Your job will be ministry. You will not serve because you need a salary. You will serve because you love what you're doing to God's people. That's your blessing. And I speak that blessing, I release it over everybody here. Ah, some of you are young. I speak over you, you're not going to run around and hustle in this country like other people are hustling or in your country. That's not your portion. I speak over you that the Lord will show you how to create wealth as a kingdom manager and how to multiply it for his work. And I declare, Lord, Pastor Milton talked about Muslims. I speak over these people that, Lord, because of them, the church of God will be built. Hey, some of them have parents who built churches. I know some of you, that's your heritage. I speak over you that that is your heritage as well. 
that your children will say my father built churches my mother put up churches the churches were built and established because of the resources that God entrusted my parents and so we release this blessing now upon you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and God's people say it amen amen come on give glory to God Woo! amen can you see some kingdom financials in the house these ones are blessed they started early they started early amen please have your seats uh, we are running out of time like Pastor Milton says. We want to pray for one last category and Pastor Milton, come. I want you to lead that prayer. We're going to pray for anybody who's sick. Uh, the Bible says that we preach the word and we heal the sick. That's just a command. So when God tells us to do something, it means he expects us to do it. It's not a suggestion, it's a command. And so right now, if you're here, you have any illness, anything that is plaguing you right now, a discomfort. Some of you have been having a discomfort, a health scare, whatever it is. Come up to the front. Just run up to the front right now. We don't have time, so just come as quickly as you can. Uh, and let's just trust God. Some of you, it's somebody at home in your house. You left a sick parent in the house. You left a sick uh, relative in the house. And somebody's in a difficult situation. We're trusting God for healing. We're trusting God for healing. So come up, come up as quickly as you can. And I'm going to invite Pastor Milton if you just speak a prayer over us. Oh, Lord, look at your children, Lord. There's so many of them. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Pussy, go ahead. Father, the kingdom of heaven is here. Mm. The kingdom of heaven is here. Yeah. And it is near each and every one of these people yes. who've presented themselves yes. or are standing in the gap. And Lord God, we know that where the kingdom of heaven is, then there is no sickness, there is no illness, there yeah. is no disease. Yeah. Yeah. And right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> we speak yeah. healing you, and Lord. wholeness you, over each one Thank of you. them yes. or whoever yes. they are standing in the gap for. Thank you, Jesus. So if it is you, just touch whatever is the area, the organ, an area near wherever uh, the illness is, uh, just touch the space, whatever the area is. Father, in the name of Jesus, as they lay their hands over the area that Lord God is affected by illness, by disease, by infirmity, oh God, whether they are standing in the gap on behalf of someone or themselves, Father, we declare healing right now in the name of Jesus. By faith, we sprinkle the blood of Jesus that Lord God has virtue for healing over that part, over that organ, over that cell, over that sinew, over that muscle, over that bone, over that tendon, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we command every pain to leave their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. We, our God, invite the Holy Spirit of promise who created order when there was chaos in the world to create order in any space that is dysfunctional or out of order in their bodies or the bodies of the ones they are representing in the name of Jesus. Father, you say healing is bread to your children. Right now, may your children receive the bread of healing that satisfies and brings peace, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we rebuke every spirit of infirmity. Yes. We rebuke every spirit yes. of illness that comes yes. in lineages and bloodlines. We rebuke their power in the name of Jesus and we cancel their strength and their ability to torment and oppress in the name of Jesus. So right now over these ones and those who are still watching online, who, Lord God, are standing in faith. Lord God, would you show yourself the God who's faithful, even when we are faithless, as you bring healing upon them, because you are the God who heals them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody give glory to God. Amen. Just receive it. Receive it. The Lord is here. He says, we pray for the sick. He does the rest. And so we're trusting God that there is healing in the house. There is healing in the house. The Lord has done it. The last thing we're going to do is just engage in covenant. We engage in covenant. Covenant is when you make commitment. And it goes beyond contract. Because a covenant is something that is a spiritual commitment. That is not breakable. It's not shakable. 
it's not because of trouble it's not till death it's not till death do us pass or or trouble do us part it's lifelong and jesus said i make a covenant with you with my blood i've given my life for you that we will be in co covenant relationship and as we share this bread together i'm going to invite the executive team and their spouses if you'd all come and just grab uh the wafers and the, the juice there's some on both sides and then just spread out as much as you can at the front we're going to be making covenant every time we take communion by the way it's not a ritual i think that's a mistake i used to make when i was a young child i thought it was a ritual it's something that you do you close your eyes then you just kazahad what's the word how do you say it in english you kaza you just psych and something happens no 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 that's not what it is it is actually engaging in covenant God has already come this way and what we're doing is just coming to the next part and saying I receive. And whenever we 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 engage in covenant, we're saying God, I am a kingdom builder. I am a representative of your kingdom. I'm not living for me. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. It's Christ who lives in me. That's what whenever whenever we take communion, we're remembering what we were bought for, what he died for, and we're recommitting ourselves and we're saying I am part of this thing. I'm part of what you left me here for. And so as we take this communion remember we're doing it as covenant it's a physical sign of an inner spiritual commitment that I will follow Jesus 100% that I will be a kingdom builder 100% that everything that is mine all my ambitions my thoughts my dreams they belong first to him and I will seek first his kingdom and so the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed he took bread this is what the scriptures tell us and after he had broken it he said this is my body that is broken for you. Those guys had no clue at the time what he meant, that he was about to actually physically be broken because of them. And he said, "Eat this in remembrance of me." It's like God before it even happened, he wanted them to start remembering it. He was giving them something to remember. Every time we eat it, we remember that body. And then he said in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and after he 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 told them, "Drink this cup. This cup is a new covenant in my blood." He says whenever you drink this cup whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup you're proclaiming the Lord's death until he returns. Why are we proclaiming his death? It's not because we are so excited about the fact that he died, but we're excited about the fact that his death opened a way for us for us to become like him. Jesus died that we may become like God. Does that does that make sense to somebody? That actually we were created to live a divine life, but sin cut us off. Jesus came back to bring us back that we'll be able to do greater things than he because we are connected to him and he is with the Father. And so as we eat this bread, as we drink this wine, we proclaim the Lord's death and what he did until he returns. Father, we thank you for communion. Communion also means fellowship and oneness. And I thank you for the communion of these saints, these people who are in this house that we are one. Lord I thank you for those who may still be online watching that they are part of this fellowship as they share in their own space that we are one there's a communion of the saints in this place but Lord our communion is not just with one another it's a communion with you as well we are covenanting with you that you are ours and we are yours and that your agenda is our agenda that we will build your kingdom and so Lord even as we take this bread and as we drink this cup I pray that Lord Jesus you would renew our faith in you you renew our strength and i declare that lord even as your people take this that the healing we've prayed for will quickly appear that the signs of your presence will appear to them even as they go home lord i pray we've prayed for people to be filled with the spirit i pray that some of them will even experience that tonight even as they're out of this space that father god you will affirm the covenant you have with them and so we thank you lord and we bless you and we pray this in jesus name Amen. I'm going to ask you to just walk up if you can as quickly as you can. Just grab one of the wafers and cups from your pastors and then go back to your seat. We're going to eat it together as the last thing we do tonight. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus so what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make
So this, this is a bit technical for those of you who haven't used this before. Uh, there's two seals. So the first one is the very top seal and it releases the bread. I don't know, these Hill City people, they, or these Mavuno people, they made Holy Communion an exam. So, so, so first of all, you have to free that bread. So just free the bread, make sure your, the, your bread is free. By the way, the first time that they did this for me and I was in church, by the way, communion passed and I didn't take communion. I still... <laughs> so so I'm, just going to, I'm just going to take it slow so everybody's got their bread. If you've got your bread, just show it to me. Amen, you passed the exam. If your neighbor hasn't, just help them. All right, let's make sure they're okay. We don't want to leave anybody behind. And then once you get the bread, the seal of the cup is much easier to deal with. All right, amen. In faith in Jesus, in love for one another, in our commitment and fellowship, and our passion for his kingdom, let's eat the bread. Please open the cup, open the second seal. Sounds like something in the book of Revelation. The second seal was opened. Again, this cup, every time I drink it, I think of what the Lord did for me to be where I am. Oh my God, he did everything. I'm just responding to his love. My life is a response to his love for me. Our lives are a response to his love for us. Let's drink together. And so, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you because you are a good God. Thank you because you are a good Father. Lord Jesus, there really is a fresh wind. There's an anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place. I can sense it. There's just a newness in this place. I just sense that, Lord, there's going to be a joy released in some people here who've not been in joy for a long time. They'd even forgotten how joy feels. And I speak over them that, Lord, they're going to leave this place and there'll just be a lightness. That heavy burden they've been carrying is lifted in Jesus' name. I declare over people here who've been stuck that, Lord, they will be unstuck after this. They'll be amazed at how quickly the Lord will unstuck them. Some of you have been so stuck because it took you so long to get stuck, you thought the Lord will take as long to get you out. But I'm speaking over them, Lord, that the unstuckness will happen so fast, it will be obviously the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying even by tomorrow, by the time we're attending church, we'll have testimonies to share about things that happened at the gathering. Lord, I speak over your people now. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined the things that God has in store for those who love Him. Lord, these are the ones who love you. They're the ones who love you. And so God's people, if you love Him, feed His sheep. Go out from here and feed His sheep. And when we see you next at Fearless Summit, I declare over you there will be testimonies in every household here. I don't even know if we'll be able to share those testimonies. We need to figure out how we're going to receive those testimonies because there are going to be testimonies in every household here. And so I bless you now, God's people, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it together. Amen. Amen. Give glory to Jesus. Woo. God bless you. Go in peace. Feed His sheep. Amen.